uh, this morning. Um, in the panel earlier, one of the gentlemen mentioned that the voice of the leadership of our nation is not necessarily the voice of the people. And in a way, you actually led me to my question when you mentioned Chananayakam, which is uh, of the people, for the people, and by the people. So on one hand, we're talking about empowering people with uh, making decisions that will benefit the nations. But these are the same people that are intolerant when it comes to portraying a fictitious character on the, on the big screen and they threaten to behead her. Uh, why are we so intolerant, is my question, and directly related to the year of tolerance in UAE. I, I didn't get the point of beheading somebody. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, it, related to the Padmavat controversy when the actress was... Oh. Uh, so, we're talking about empowering people, and then we have the same people coming up with trivial issues, which is uh, when we have bigger issues to deal with. See, uh, democracy leaves people with a certain amount of privileges without any particular mechanism to insist on a responsible behavior from everybody. So a whole lot of people misuse these privileges in different ways. Don't take that as the, the standard. That's not how most people are. Anyway, about whether the leaders represent people or not, the argument generally is, uh, well, only sixty percent of the people voted. Out of that, the present leader got only thirty-one percent, so how can he be the nation's leader? Well, what the hell are the remaining forty percent of the people doing? When they have not voted, they have no rights to comment either. So if it matters to you, you must stand up and vote, it's a privilege, you must exercise that. And how should you exercise it? It's very important now that the elections are coming and maybe many of you do vote in India. See, the important thing is if democracy has to work, the feudalistic mindset has to go in the sense, if even one family votes as one unit, then it's not democracy. This is the idea of secret ballot, that everybody should think for themselves and vote. If you vote as a family, if you vote as a caste, if you vote as a religion, even if you vote as a party, I'm saying something which is going to be... I'm going to be unpopular with all the political parties in the country. I'm saying this political party membership should be taken away. There should be no such thing because I see, particularly in the United States, if you ask somebody, he says, I'm a Republican, why my father was a Republican? My grandfather was a Republican, so your vote is already decided. This is a feudalistic way of existence. Where is the democracy in this? We are getting there also rapidly. In our country, it was not like that in the beginning, but now we are getting there very rapidly. I feel this political membership should not be there. There should be a limit. If they need a, that many people, maybe a five hundred people, a thousand people to run their party, that many people can be the members. Public should not be members because they're pre-committed, which is not a good thing. Every time when the election comes, you must evaluate what's happened in the last five years, is it worthwhile, whether we should give them another chance or not, is something that each individual should decide. If you decide as a mass, either because of your party membership or because of your religious affiliation or because you belong to a caste or whatever, then there is no democracy as such, it is just feudalism in the name of democracy. And uh, most countries are becoming like this, particularly United States has taken to this, and India is going that way. I think if we want a course correction, we are talking about voting beyond religion and caste, but what about the party? Party has become the new religion. It's important that there should be no memberships, people should decide just before the election who they want to vote for. Otherwise, uh, we will subvert the democratic process.